Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing something that gives me a little bit of anxiety but also makes me feel very good at the same time. It's kind of weird. But uh, as you know, the title says, out with the old and with the new. I am here to show you some of the new plants that I've acquired um, over, the, over the last few weeks and I'm gonna show you who is gonna go. So some of you have said like, how come you're bringing so many new plants home if you said you're purging and you're trying to prepare for Archie, all of that still holds true. But now I'm following the rule of one in, one out. So for every plant that I bring in, um, I have to, oh, it's a little otter. For every plant that I bring in, I have to let one go so that there's always the same amount of plants in the house. I also said if some of them were bigger, then it should equal two plants to one plant meaning two plants out, one big plant in. Um, and we kind of have a mixture. No, we don't have a mixture of both. They're all big plants that I brought home. So um, some of you guys might know if you have been watching this channel for a long time, I used to talk about my friend Erin a lot and I met her through plants. She, over the last year or so, has she purchased a horse and so she's kind of like fallen out of the plant hobby a bit a lot and now she's just full horse girl so a lot of the plants um that used to be in her collection i have acquired other friends have acquired and this is where all of these plants came from so she reached out recently and was like look i have all these plants that are overgrown i don't know what to do with them can you take them off my hands so i couldn't say no so i'm just gonna qu kind of quickly show you who i got from her and then we will head into the plant room, do some repotting, and I will show you who is going to have to get the boot. Um, so the first one is very, very exciting. They're actually all very exciting. So this is a Hoya Eversherii. Eve if you watched my Hoya collection video, you would have seen a little sneak peek of this. But um, I got my main Eversherii, which is... I don't know if you can see it. It's in the background behind me. I do plan on combining these pots eventually. Um, this is where I got my plant from. She gave me a few cuttings over last Christmas. I think it was last Christmas. She basically just gave me the rest of the pot. She took a little cutting for herself and gave me the rest. And I'm just obsessed with this. I think this has to be probably one of my favorite Hoyas. Um, not only for the way it looks, but it's just really easy to grow. I have found it to be very easy going. It does kind of have a crazy growth pattern. It's not like the Linearis where it grows very like tame and um, it all kind of just drapes, you know, and it just, it's all, it's all very compact and together. This one has much rigider, rigider, has rigider stems. A lot thicker and so they kind of have the ability to to hold itself up until it reaches a certain weight but I kind of like that about it it like has a mind of its own and it takes its own little form and just makes a great statement piece on a shelf yeah I think I will eventually after my trip to California I'm gonna repot this into my main pot and we'll get it all together might take a few cuttings like in areas where it's really bald, do a little propagation, maybe sell some of the cuttings, but um, I am going to keep most of it because I love this plant very much and I'm excited to have a full pot. Hopefully I can fit this in the frame. It's very heavy. Oh my Lanta. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to set it down and move you back. It's really heavy. It's like in all pond and it's in this ceramic Pot, so it's just it's got some weight to it, but obviously as you can tell This is a philodendron Dean McDowell. Hopefully you can hear me from all the way over there. This one has Been through a lot with her. We've actually repotted this plant for her before just because it grows so fast And it kind of looks like she recently repotted it. I think I'm not sure if she kept the butt end But it looks very sh like the the stem the rhizome is about this big and there's quite a few 
inches left in the pot for it to grow so i think she did repot this one recently but i think eventually the plan is going to be to combine it with my other two dean mcdowells and i know that might sound a bit crazy but um i don't have space to put two separate mcdowells in two different areas and also because they can have like these crazy long petioles sometimes if it's not given light close by which this one was living pretty far away from a light at her house which is why these stems are a mile long but because they kind of have the tendency to go wherever i really like combining them into one pot because it just makes it look so much fuller like my dean mcdowell now i have two plants in one pot and I just enjoy it. I enjoy the way it looks so much because it just looks so bushy and full and nice. You don't really see a lot of empty gaps and stuff. So I know it's ambitious. I know it might be a lot, but um, I do think that once this outgrows the pot, I'm not gonna do it anytime soon, but once this outgrows the pot, I will combine all three together and we will have one mega, mega pot of Dean McDowell and I'm just so excited because this is one of my favorite like pillowy philodendron I just I can't imagine not ever having one like this is a staple in my house just like the tortum and so when she offered it I just jumped at the opportunity because I, I don't have the space but for a McDowell you have to make space it would be a crime and I think that if I tried to sell this for her it would just be it would be sad because we'd probably have to like chop the leaves off and I just, I don't want to put her through that. I will make the space for her. So for right now, I'm just going to stick her up here and hopefully um, it's enough light for her. It's going to be right next to my other Dean McDowell. So hopefully they can make friends, but oh my gosh, I need to show you this leaf. Look how good it is. I'm going to move you closer because I can't, I can't carry it. This pillowy goodness is just it's too much it's too much to handle i don't know how anybody could not like this plant the way that like the the venation is so bright white it goes all the way to the edge of the leaf margin giving it that super pillowy puffy look i think this one is so much better than the pastazanum no offense to the pastazanum and in a lot of ways even better than <laughs> the gloriosum well the gloriosum verde anyway um, I just I'm in love with this plant. So I'm really really happy to have it and hopefully I can keep it happy It's just very sticky. Oh my gosh. This is so so heavy Woo. Please Please cooperate Okay, oh my gosh you guys <laughs> So It was a journey getting this here. This is also in Lechuza Pond in this big old planter. This one actually does need to be repotted, but I'm not going to be doing any repotting of these plants anytime soon because I'm going on a trip. I don't like repotting anywhere from three weeks out from a trip because then I just, I can't observe it. I can't save it if something goes wrong. So um, this one will have to wait and she's been doing fine crawling out of this pot. But anyway, I have inherited the rest of her philodendron gloriosum white veins i actually have this plant in my collection it's the one that i got into that massive planter that was a cutting from this plant and um she was just ready to let go of the rest of it so she's a big 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 beast she has so many leaves like there are a million bajillion leaves on this thing new leaf back here there's part of me that is like, I don't, I don't even want to cut it. Like, it just seems like such a shame because it's just grown so well and it looks so nice. And there's just, they're just like a happy little family. Look at these Gorgina leaves. They're growing like perfectly. And um, this one was growing in ambient conditions as well. Growing in pond, as you can see in a self-watering planter. Planter? Yeah, planter. But anyway, I am just so happy to kind of reunite the gang, um, get them back together. I had to get rid of one bigger plant in my collection to accommodate for this one because of its size. But I think it's going to be worth it because this is just, I'm, some of you know, I'm just, I'm a philodendron girl at heart. 
um, my friends, they don't understand it when I'm just constantly like going fill it engine crazy, collecting multiples of ones I already have. But this is like, this is what can get me out of bed in the morning. This is, this is love, this is joy, this is pure happiness. Everybody keep your fingers and toes crossed that she's happy with me here. I would hate to see her go downhill I am nervous that you know, I'm bringing home all of these new plants so close to a trip, but um, I'll be facetiming with Vince uh, Pretty much every day and we'll ask to see how the children are doing I'm gonna teach him how to water do all of that. So yeah, wish him luck too, but I was very excited to show you guys this one because she is just an absolute unit and a dream. This could be the biggest mistake ever, but I have adopted her mother, Anthurium politiflorum. Look at the size of these leaves. I'm a bit nervous because this was living in her greenhouse and it's like, it's interesting, it's like a cold greenhouse. Everything does so well in there. Um, so it's like humidity is higher, temperatures are lower because it was in a basement and I feel like her Anthurium loved it. And so I'm just like, well, I can't, I can give you a greenhouse, but it's not going to be cool. It's actually going to be quite hot. So I've just put her directly onto the shelf and I'm just going to keep fingers crossed that she does okay. But the size of these leaves are just ginormous and... The leaves are like so thick. Look how thick they are. <sighs> so now I own three Anthurium politiflorum. There's a part of me that is considering selling my original politiflorum because if I have this one plus my super narrow one, I feel like I'm good. Um, but the, the thing is, is like I've had that one for so long and there's like that weird sentimental attachment. So I'm like, maybe I just combine the pots when I'm ready to repot this which it's going to need very, very soon because it's been growing in moss this entire time since it's been imported. Um, a lot of the roots that crawled out of it are dead now, but she doesn't seem to mind. Like, look at how thick this stem has gotten, like, from where it started. It's so girthy. And I'm just surprised it's growing in moss. I texted Alice and I was like, I'm so pissed i'm actually annoyed that this thing has grown as big as it has in moss and i feel like i've given my politiflorum everything under the sun and she just is still the tiniest little thing and i think i even got mine i did get mine before before aaron did but look at this monster of a leaf my goodness this is the one that i'm actually the most nervous about because i feel like all of the other things i acquired from her like all good, you know, have plenty of experience with that. Philodendron, I, I feel so comfortable caring for them. But me and Anthurium, we're just like, I don't know. I think if I start to see this one go downhill or start to yellow even more, cause it's, I acquired it with it already sort of yellowing. And I think maybe part of the reason is like, maybe the moss was drying out too, too often because she wasn't watering that much. She probably hasn't fertilized in a really long time. Um, but I think if I notice this thing tanking even more, I might do an SOS rescue mission and s ship this off to Alice's house. She's gonna be like, seriously, again, again, we're doing this again, because she took my politiflorum a while back and rehabbed it. And this one is like 10 times the size. But man, I am happy to have her and um, I will do my dang best to keep her happy but um you know as soon as we're back from california i think you already know who we're going to be repotting because i want to get this into a tree fern fiber mix with soil but i think heavier on the tree fern fiber i don't know why that's just like my inkling with this plant right now and get it into like a pot that's like two to three times larger than this and then hopefully i can keep this growth going the last one the last one that um, she dropped off here that I will not be keeping, surprisingly, is this philodendron. I think I'm remembering the idea of this correctly. The philodendron rubrosinctum platinum. I used to have this plant before, but we didn't really get along. As much as I think these leaves are so, so pretty, 
and would be like a really great contrast to a lot of the philodendron that I have in my house right now. I just don't, I don't really see like a long-term relationship with us both. I mean, maybe there's a chance I might keep like a small like butt cut of it because I do want to get this repotted um, and ready for its new owner and it looks like it has quite a bit of stem. So I might keep a butt cut. I might keep a butt cut just in case I change my mind because this is a plant that I used to really, really love. I just, after having a not so great experience with it, primarily because of EFN and spider mites, um, I can see a little bit of EFN on this leaf, but nowhere near as much as I used to have. It was so bad. It just like burned through the leaves and it just looked so rusty and like ugly. And I just, I still have that soured experience in my mind. And so for that reason, I'm not like jumping at the opportunity to keep this big boy, but I will, I think, take a butt cut see if I change my mind and if I end up not wanting to keep it then I can always sell it but um, I'm gonna get this one repotted today because Lauren's live sale is in two days so uh, I'm gonna see if anybody wants to adopt it but anyway that is it for all of the new plants that I just brought home and they're all so big I do have quite a few plant not nah, i'm not gonna say quite a few i have a handful of plants that i'm getting rid of and uh, we're just gonna go repot it today and get them ready because i am gonna be selling them this week at the north shore tropicals live sale sorry if you're watching this i'm literally filming this like a month in advance so all of these plants will likely already be gone by the time you watch it it's really hard to get up a video quick enough for an upcoming live sale because I know some people like they'll watch a video and I'll say oh it's going to be available in the live sale and they show up to the live sale and they ask for that plant but that happened like three live sales ago so just an FYI a lot of these plants that you're seeing are probably already going to be sold by the time you watch it but if I ever do for whatever reason get up a video before a live sale then I will say that that's the case so that you know to hop onto her live. Um, but anyway, let's go into the plant room. I'm going to show you who um, I'm selling and I don't really have like a chat topic. We're just gonna kind of shoot the shoot the shiz and get this done. Welcome to the plant room. Hopefully this angle is okay. I'm just gonna start doing one by one um, and showing you who is gonna go. Some of you might be disappointed seeing some of these up on the chopping block, but it's just what has to be done and I'm following my heart. Let's start with an easy one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is the, it is, my corneas, my corneas are being burned. It is so bright. Corneas, retinas, <laughs> I don't know what the difference is. So this is my last Florida Beauty. You guys might know that I used to have a really, really big one. Um, I just, I don't know, I got to a point where I was like, I just don't think it's for me anymore. And uh, yeah, here we are. So this is the last one now that it's rooted, very lightly rooted, not super crazy rooted, but as I've been selling them, I've been saying that they're lightly rooted. And I thought maybe I would just keep this, use it as a mother, keep taking propagations, but honestly they've gone into tissue culture. Well, they've been in tissue culture, but now they're in our stores for dirt cheap. So I'm like, you know what? It's just, if I ever want another one again, I can easily find one. Um, so it's time to let her go just because there are new plants that have come in that are making me a lot happier than this. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just gonna sell this one off, but I want to take my Leka back, take my vessel back, and I'm gonna get it into perlite. I really honestly never thought I'd see the day where, actually, you know what? I don't wanna dump this Leka into there. So I'm gonna keep it separate. I just, I never thought I, was, I would see the day where I wouldn't want a Florida Beauty anymore. It's crazy. Like there's a part of me that, you know, feels kind of guilty sometimes and feels like, I don't know, questioning my opinions questioning like like how do i cycle through it so fast sometimes with some plants like how can it be 
my favorite for a certain period and then now I'm at a point where I'm like, yeah, it's time for you to go. It's just, it's crazy, but you know, it happens. So I'm just gonna do an inspection, make sure I see an auxiliary bud and I do, it is under here. And this is the root system right now, so it's not very big at all, but it is rooted. And I think it'll do fine in its transition into pond or into perlite. It does have a bit of what looks like thrift damage, but it's not. Um, sometimes these really, really yellow variegated leaves, they turn like this coppery color and it gets really like, I don't know. I don't know what the cause of it is, um, I was seeing it on this plant pretty heavily towards the end and I don't know if it was like a lack of light or something, but it's pest free. Uh, definitely doesn't have thrips. I can spot thrips from a mile away, but the damage looks very, very thrippy. So I have to make that disclaimer too when I sell it because I don't want anyone thinking that, you know, I sold them a plant with thrips or something. Luckily, I haven't seen thrips in this house in a very long time. Knock on wood, but you know, we still got plenty of spider mites, so we have lots of company. I think I'm gonna stick this back in here. I've been so anxious wanting to repot some of the new plants, but I'm, I'm like, I have to stop myself because then I know while I'm away, I'd probably just stress about it so much. And I don't want to stress Vince out having to care for newly repotted plants. I'm still like keeping an eye on the Glorious. So far, it's looking good. Um, it was really, really sad the day of and the day after I repotted it. And I will link the video that I'm referencing in the description if you didn't watch it. Actually, maybe I should lean this stick against the side that would make more sense um yeah i'll link the description i i chopped up my glorious and i put it onto a new pole and it was so sad i put it into um like a tree fern fiber soil mix and i just i don't know for i went to bed that night and i saw how floppy the leaf was and i just i kind of knew that it would bounce back but for some reason, I just didn't feel good about rerooting the. Now doesn't it? Does it look dark now? <sighs> I don't know what. I don't know how to feel. And yeah, I went to bed that night, and I just wasn't feeling very good about it. So the next day, I took it out and I put it into um, Lekka, and it's perkier now, and it seems like it's taken to the transition, hopefully. But that's one where I'm like, I still have two weeks from now to kind of observe it, but I am very nervous about it while I'm away. Um, okay, so that was, yeah, that we started nice and easy, just easing into it, nothing too crazy. Um, I think the next one I'll do, I'll do all of the pond plants next. So here we have the Allocation Nycteris. You can see how badly I have neglected this thing. I just let this thing go dry so often and it's in a greenhouse it's just so thirsty um the main plant has a new leaf on the way so i'm gonna hold on to the main plant until the new leaf comes out and then sell it at the next live sale if it's looking okay um, and it takes the transition well but i'm going to sell these two little babies offsets that grew from a corm in the pot. I'm also going to wipe it down and get it ready for its new home. The story with the Alocasia nycteris, aka the batwing Alocasia, it's a really, really cool Alocasia, and that's why I grabbed it when I saw it. Um, I actually got this while I was plant shopping with my mom when she was in town, and I had never heard of or seen it before, and as soon as I saw it, I was just like immediately intrigued. I'm like, who is this little cutie patootie? Initially, I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be like one of my, it would never be one of my favorite alocasias in the world. Wasn't sure how long I'd keep it around, but I don't know. Sometimes I like bringing plants home just to kind of like experience it and test it out and see if it grows on me more. 
and this nursery that I went to was pretty far away so it's not like I could just easily go back and grab one if I had regrets so I've had this now for like almost six months it's been kind of a short time but I just realized that I didn't I didn't really take to it the way that I thought I would when I posted this on Instagram it got a lot of interest so I'm glad I was able to at least introduce it to some people, but um, I just don't think it's for me. Uh, but we do have some corms here. So we got this little corm. They're all really good sizes. This one needs to be peeled. This one is still attached. I'm gonna detach it. This one's a nice, big, plump, juicy one. So I'll keep all of these and propagate them. And then there's some smaller corms on here, which I think I'll just leave. And then whoever inherits this can harvest it and grow from corm or sell the corms to offset the cost of buying this plant. I can see two, I can see two other corms starting to form on this thing, not ready to harvest at all. Wait, one, two, three, there's actually four corms on here. I'm gonna leave that one because it's quite small. This one right here. I mean, it's definitely big enough to propagate. Okay, I snapped it off. <laughs> she's, I guess she's mine, but I'll leave the rest. And it's got its own little root system, which is great. And then same with this little nuggetita. Little root system, one cute leaf. This one's so adorable. Sherman, what are you thinking? Um, and then I will just keep this one for a little bit longer and let this new leaf kind of come out and do its thing and then I'll resell it, like I said. There's a chance that I am missing a corm in here somewhere. It always, I always find corms in my, in my pond because it's like, the same color, especially when I mix Orchiata into it, it's like impossible to find all the little baby corms, but it's a nice little surprise. I just have to hang on to it a little longer to see who it is. So what I'm gonna do first is just get them wiped down with my solution. 99% alcohol, Dr. Woods, peppermint and tea tree cast style soap, and that's it, and water. And I am gonna chop these leaves off, but I do wanna just get them wiped down in case there's anything on here. I don't see any spider mites, which is kind of a surprise because it had spider mites when I first brought it home. The place I brought this home from, I feel like they've gotten a little bit better with their pest thing, but they're just like known, and I don't even have to drop a name, and I won't drop a name because that's not what we do here, but if you're local to where I live, you'll know, you'll know which nursery I'm talking about, the pesty one. And it, I mean, I do think that they, it's not like they don't just like care at all, cause I do see that they take precautions, like they've been using neem um, to treat and sulfur. Cause sometimes you'll see plants in the shop and it's got like sulfur all over it, or it's like oily cause of the neem but I, I think they need like biological control. Like I think they need some like hardcore predator, predatory pests in there or something. Cause I don't think the, uh, I don't think what they're doing is really working. Cause I've been seeing a lot of posts recently like, oh PSA, if you grabbed a plant from so-and-so make sure you wash cause there's a bunch of mealies on it or scale or spider mites or something, but. I always expect pests, honestly. I know plant stores should aim to be pest free and they should be you know, doing all they can to make sure they're trying to sell plants with little to no pests and kind of taking that responsibility. But I do think it's just part of the hobby. That is done. I'm gonna, oh, please don't fall off. I'm gonna wipe down these little guys. My trip is getting so close and I'm getting anxious. Excited and also nervous. Um, I haven't been back to California since, I think I was there in the summer of last year. 
So it's been kind of a long time and all of these trips that I've been going on to California, Vince is always with me. And I know it's not good to be codependent, but like with my anxiety and like all the mental health stuff I've been going through over the last two years, I feel like I've kind of used him as a security blanket. And so when just thinking about traveling without him and being away from him for so long, it's just like making me, I don't know. I'm just getting really nervous, but you know, of course I'm gonna be in good hands. I'll be with my family. I'll be in the second safest place or just as safe as my own home. Um, so that's good. At least it's not like a work trip or something because I used to have to go with my old job. I used to have to travel often without him and you know, stay in hotels and stuff, but I feel like I was in a much better headspace back then. I don't know if I'd be able to do that now. I don't really like being away from home. But anyway, I am excited to go back. I was like watching all of the old videos from when I was back home. And I'm just like really excited to see my niece and nephew again. Millie has changed so much in the time that I've been away. It's crazy. She's like morphed into this brand new person. And she's so different. And I'm just so, so excited to see her. And I think she knows, like we're gonna try and surprise her, but I think like she knows, cause every time I, she says to come there and hang out with her, I'm like, yeah, soon, like I will. But I feel like she knows that a trip is coming up now, even though we're not explicitly saying when, not that she has any concept of time or anything. Okay, so again, getting these back into perlite. Ideally, I'd love to keep it in pawn when selling it, but it's really heavy um, to ship and perlite is just so much easier for Lauren to ship and I just want things to be as easy as possible for her, especially since I do none of the work shipping wise. Like I literally sell plants there and then don't see them again. So I think, you know, pond to perlite is gonna be a lot better than me trying to do something like soil or moss or something. It's been raining in California, which I mean is great. Like they've had some storms and stuff and they could use the rain, you know, it's like they don't get enough rain as it is, but I'm kind of hoping that there's like a little bit of sun at least when I'm back. I feel like that would be good for my mental health. I've just been, I've been at a low. I don't know what happened, it just tanked. I was good and then I wasn't. It went from like great to terrible, almost what seems like overnight. I don't feel like, I feel like there wasn't like a slow progression. It was just like one day my panic attacks came back unprovoked. And I was like, oh, okay, we're back, we're back. Got it. So I have to see my psychiatrist again, which is gonna be fun. This little thing is so cute and I'm fighting off the inner monologue in my head that's like, you dumb idiot, why are you selling this? You're so stupid. Shh, quiet. It's just not realistic for me to keep all of these guys around when I'm taking home new plants. Plus, I have a feeling, I feel like, I feel like I'm probably gonna import once this year. Not like a huge order, but I, I, I feel like it might happen. Like in the spring or something. Not that there's really anything on my wish list that's on an import list right now from Ecuador. To be honest. I don't know. Importing is just fun sometimes. All right, all tucked in. Hopefully transition goes well. I, I don't have any doubts um i transitioned my cuprias from what was it pawn to pawn to Leca when i sold the little babies and they just they rooted really great and so i think perlite might be the same if not better who's next oh we're doing more pawn plants okay so this next one is a hoya and i wish i could tell you the id but i don't know it i got this from alice not too long ago, but I just decided, is this, why is it tripping? I just decided against keeping it. It's a really cool Hoya. I don't know why this one looks like that. I think I might chop it off, but I, I don't know. When I compare it to all of my other 
sort of reptilian looking Hoyas. I'm not, I'm not really sure I love it as much as I thought I would. So yeah, I'm gonna rehome this too, but I think I am gonna um, chop this leaf off just because it looks, it was growing right into the light. And I don't know, is this sun stress? But it doesn't look great. Like there are some Hoyas that sun stress really nicely. This to me does not look like a nicely sun stressed Hoya, if that is sun stress. So um, I'll chop it as soon as I repot. And the same thing, I'm just gonna go to perlite. Hopefully I don't regret this. I don't think I will. I'm not like too Hoya crazy right now. I'm gonna chop it after because of the sap. Um, I said I was gonna put it in this. Wait, I'm just gonna put it in here. Anyway, just something to chat about. Um, I talked about this in another video, how my iMac is slowing down a lot because that's from 2019, I think, or 2018 or 2019. So it's like a couple years old now and old girl is slowing down. She's getting slow and um, you know, I do, oh. I do obviously a lot of long form videos and I don't mean, and I mean long form, like hours and hours. And like I would say a typical video for me is around an hour and a half. Typically hour 15 is like my standard, but you know, I have videos that go into the two to, I have the one four hour video, which is wild. I'm not ever gonna do that again. But all that to say, Whenever I am editing a video now that's over like an hour and a half, like once I start to approach the hour and a half mark, my computer goes so slow and it's so infuriating to work. Like it just cuts into productivity so much. I'm just like sitting there waiting for it to like unfreeze, waiting for it to load, waiting for the frames to like play smoothly. And it's, yeah, it's just not, it's just not happening anymore. And so I was looking into a new, MacBook Pro because I was like it'd be so great to be able to especially like once Archie is here to be able to like edit from bed or edit anywhere in the house edit from California if I wanted to stay in California longer but oh my gosh I'm like I'm looking at least at like 2300 before taxes and I'm like gagged why is it so expensive why um so yeah I'm not getting <laughs> to macbook right away i i don't know i feel like i don't know like obviously it's a work cost right but it's such a big one and it hurts it's painful that's so much money but i need it i really really need it hopefully by like mid-year if i make enough money selling plants if i make enough money on youtube if i can I guess justify that cost because I'm gonna go with like a higher like RAM like processing power like I'm not gonna do the basic model anymore because I do have a laptop it's old too I think it's older than my my iMac um but that one is like not made for editing that's like made for like doing school stuff and PowerPoint presentations and going online and video chatting and stuff but it's not it's not really made to handle what I'm doing on Final Cut Pro, so I do have to get something a little bit more upgraded, which <sighs> it hurts, it hurts so bad. Here she is in all her glory. Hopefully Alice doesn't mind if I sell it. I'm sure she won't care. The next one's also a Hoya. If you watched my Hoya video, you would have already known this is on the chopping block. This is a Hoya chicken farm. I don't know, it just, I took it home one day and I just didn't really love it the way I thought I would. So that's the, that's the end of that story. <laughs> um, I feel good about the Hoyas that I have now. I feel like the ones that I have are like, like staples for me. And there's not really any other Hoyas that I'm super after, honestly. And so once these are gone, these Hoyas, I think I'm gonna 
be very, very, very careful and mindful about the Hoyas I'm bringing home. I don't want to just say yes to everything that like look, looks cool in the moment. Like I really need to, you know, think about the long term with it and remember that they need to go on trellises and they take up space and so yeah you know i basically have to think i don't like doing that very often when you're an adult you have to think about your actions unfortunately you are not a fried egg i do have a fried egg that just popped a leaf and i was gonna sell it but it's so freaking pretty i'm like maybe i need a backup fried egg just in case mine tanks so um they're not going for that much right now anyway so i'm gonna hold on to it a little longer gotta spank it a little bit <laughs> i have to go all the way to the top because these stems are kind of long and i don't want the stems to dry out anywho she's potted i like that some of these are just so nice and quick and easy easy peasy oh my gosh my stomach feels huge lisa you said i don't look big i feel big i feel like a walrus oh i had some um shop credit with bros with hose because i'm an affiliate with them and i let my family use the credit that i had and my mom got i don't know which ones are for my mom and which one is for my other sister my sister Tiffany, who is the mom of my niece and nephew, she's getting back into plants now. I've been waiting for this day because she was super, super into plants um, when Mil when she was pregnant with Millie and when Millie was like a newborn. Um, like she was importing, she had like so many plants, she had a tent. And then, you know, Millie was born and it kind of dwindled and she got out of plants for a bit. A lot of her plants died. She had like a full like thrips outbreak and you know, she's just going through it. And she told me, she was like, you know, once Millie is in preschool, like I want to get back into plants because it was, it was really good for her mental health. But I think you, you know, obviously have to have your priorities. When do you have kids? But yeah, Millie, <laughs> she turned what, two or three. And then she got pregnant again with Ansel. And I was like, well, there goes that plant dream. So then kind of started over again. She had Ansel. But now Ansel is approaching two years old. And um, yeah, now she's getting back into plants, which is very exciting because I really liked sharing this hobby with her. But anyway, all that said, they got stuff from Rose with Hose and I'll, um, I'll link them in the description. You can use my code. You don't have to, but you get, you get like 10% off or something. Oh, I didn't even tell you. So this is my philodendron SP Napo purple, SP Napo purple. I acquired this like, I don't know, eight or nine months ago from Lauren. She got it in an import and was like, this looks like something you'd really like. And I did, um, I really, really liked it. It kind of reminded me of like a hybrid of a Spiritus Sancti and like an Atabapoense or a Mexicanum or something. Like it could be like a hybrid of them. And it's grown, it's grown well. I mean, I never gave it a poll. It just, I, I don't know, I did the very, very bare minimum with it. And it just, yeah, it's grown pretty nicely. Like it's given me some decent sized leaves. But I guess I just like, whenever a new leaf comes out, I'm not, I'm not excited the way that I am when like a new Anthurium leaf comes out or a new like, I don't know if you guys can see, like my Patty's pushing a nice big leaf. My hetero is engorged. She's about to push a new leaf. And whenever these new kinds of new leaves come out, I'm always like on leaf watch. But whenever a new leaf on this one comes out, I'm just like, oh, it's a new leaf. And so that's kind of how I clock it in my mind. Like, okay, maybe I don't love this the way that I thought I would. And so, yeah, I think it's just time to to part with this and especially it was living it didn't need to but it was living in my exo here and i really could use the space while i'm in california for some of my props and um and ethereum that need more water so i've got to do a little bit of like 
rejigging around the plant room before I go. And so, yeah, I'm trying to clear out that EXO. Anyway, bros with hose, geez. Uh, yeah, my mom and sister, they ordered a few plants. They got, my mom got a tortum. I know my mom got a tortum. She got another Thai constellation because it's kind of weird, her Thai constellation. I think I gave it to her. Didn't like have a lot of variegation, which is kind of strange because I don't remember ever giving her a Thai that wasn't like heavily um, variegated. So she got another one. I guess I could reuse that or if this fits. Yeah, I think that's good. It's gonna be a little tight, but it's temporary. She also got that hybrid that they have, and I think I'm gonna try and snag a, a cutting of this while I'm home. She got the Anthurium Crystallinum crossed with a Carla Blackier. It's actually really cute. And then a Cebu Blue Pothos. I think that one actually might be for my sister. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They got to snag some, some good stuff. I definitely plan on going to some nurseries while I'm back home. Um, I don't plan on really taking home a ton, but I have given myself a little bit of an allowance to, if I find, cause sometimes I find like really cool, like Rixalis that I can't find here. We're going to, I think it's called Flora Culture or something like that. Some of you guys might know what I'm talking about and they have like specialty Hoyas, specialty, um, Epiphyllum, Ripsalis, kind of like your weird wonky plants. I wanted to visit them the last time I was home, but I think at that time they didn't have their location yet. And he was still kind of just um, accepting walk-ins and appointments. And it just felt a little weird, like kind of felt like it's like one-on-one, -on -one, he like follows you in the store. I don't know. It just. I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, so now that they have a location that's open, now I'm like, okay, time to go. Hopefully he has some good stuff right now, but um, that one always is so highly recommended. Whenever I go back home, they're like, you have to go and visit. Like they have such cool like orchids and like uncommon plants. And that's kind of like where my heart is this year. It's like, I really want some cool, funky plants, like some new cissus, something like the cissus quadrangularis, like something along those lines, or like, yeah, new ripsalis. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's just like what I really want this year. I'm not really after a ton of aeroids. Like there are some in Ethereum that I kind of really want, but um, in terms of actually hunting for it, yeah, it's gonna be some trailing plants, I think. This isn't ideal. It's like really tight in here. I don't like it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go bigger. Let's like not set the buyer up for failure. The, the leaves just looked so squished. I just don't wanna have to move everything to get there. I think I might have something over here. Wait, perfect, perfect. Just perfect. There's somebody who follows me on Instagram and that buys from Lauren's plant sales and their username is just perfect. You love that one. Okay, let's let's do this for real now. That was just, I was just kidding. I was just testing you to see if you'd tell me to, to put it in a bigger pot and you guys didn't say anything. You failed. I hope whoever buys this really enjoys it and I hope that you give it a better life than I did because she deserved so much more. She is just aching for a pole. Look at her. She's got her little weenie out and everything. She just, she wants, she wants a pole. She wants to climb that pole. It's sad to part with plants, but at the same time, it's like, I just always hope that whoever inherits them just, yeah, gives them a better life than me because she's not like unhappy here, but she just, yeah, she could use so much more. I don't know if I should wipe these leaves down. I, mean, I guess I could, but they're quite clean, surprisingly. I might cut this leaf off, it's kind of uggs. It's 
kind of uggo and I'm gonna chop that. Ugh. Could probably also cut this leaf off too, just cause it makes it easier for Lauren to ship things, but it's really not that large compared to some of the plants she sells. So I think it'll be okay. I think she might just have to push the leaves up like this. I don't know what she does, you guys. I don't know how, I think that's like probably one of the most stressful parts about owning a plant shop is the shipping aspect of it. It's like actually shipping it and then like making sure it gets there okay, you know? Ow, guys, I've had a splinter in this spot for like three weeks. I'm not kidding. And I can't find it. I don't know where it is. It just like randomly pokes me sometimes, but I, I can't see it. I even tried using a magnifying glass. I did the trick where you use tape, but I can't find it. Okay, the next one, I need you guys to not cancel me, okay? But I have my reasons. I have my reasons. My UPI. I know, it kind of feels like I never even gave her a chance. <laughs> feels like I never gave her a chance. But look, I know what a, a UPI looks like in full maturity. I have experienced it firsthand with Nick's plants. If you guys watched me repot his massive UPI, Lauren has a huge UPI at the shop. And I just, I don't think I don't think this is a plant that I'm gonna love long-term. I think it's really freaking cool. Like, it's such an interesting weirdo guy. But I, I just, I look at the rest of my collection and I look at this one and it's the same thing. When a new leaf comes out, I'm just like, oh, a new leaf that's in my way. And these petioles are like a million bajillion miles long. Every UPI I've seen has had the longest freaking petioles ever. Um, and I'm not into it, so yeah. Also, these are popping up at our stores for like, what was it, like $9 or $7, like in bulk, like they're everywhere. So if I ever change my mind again, I know people who own it, I can run over to the store and get one. But um, yeah, it's just not for me. So maybe someone else who has been looking for a UPI that's already getting going. I think I might leave it on the pole that it's on unless it's going to be too hard for Lauren to ship. I don't know if it's even like rooted into here. If it's not rooted into here, then I'll just take it back. I don't see any roots in it, but at the same time, it's like kind of offering a little bit of stability, but then it's kind of just like falling out. No, maybe I'll take it off just because this is going to be a pain in the ASS for for Lauren. Ow, something's poking me. And it sucks because I just freaking watered this and now it's wet. I don't like... it's I Well, I don't like repotting things when it's dry because then it kicks up everywhere. But then I don't like repotting when it's wet too because it's so messy. Where's my stick? Hello? Oh, there you are. And these next few ones are all gonna go into soil. Um, I'm not gonna try and do any kind of conversion or anything. I don't wanna rip these roots off. I can see some roots down way at the bottom. And, oh no. Touch it. We don't want to touch it. Okay, it's fine. Let's take this off and see. There's probably not even any roots on here because I was so bad at keeping this pole wet. Yep, nothing. <laughs> If I showed up to the shop with this, Lauren would probably 
be like, really? Really? That's how you're gonna do me right now? Okay, so, um, oh my gosh, it's so sticky. It's so sticky. Roots are really good though. Um, I don't need to clean this off too much because I'm literally just repotting it. I just wanted to take my vessel back, but I think I'm gonna add some more perlite to this. way that I am. I just hate running over perlite because it just turns into a dust. But I gotta sweep in here anyway. Oh my gosh. My sciatica. <laughs> I'm hobbling. You guys should have seen me at my OB appointment this morning. Hobbling up and down the stairs. Oh my gosh. Probably would have been so much easier to be pregnant in my 20s. I think I would have had an easier pregnancy but then Financially, I'd be more stressed, so I don't know what the right choice was, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna pot it in this because I want something a little taller. And I do want to wipe these leaves down because they are freaking sticky. Also, my baby shower is in a little under four weeks now. I haven't done any planning. We sent out invites and that's about it. I think I'm just gonna order Panda Express <laughs> for catering and pick up some like Costco pizzas, grab some alcohol and call it a day. I feel like my family is pretty easy. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be like your typical baby shower. It's like, it's co-ed. I don't wanna do any of those like games i don't know okay is it is, i don't know if this is unpopular opinion but i find baby showers to be so painfully boring so extremely boring i feel like the games are really dumb i think opening gift i'm not going to be opening gifts in front of people because i'm for my registry i'm having everything sent to my house so that i don't have to like haul it back from california but I'm not going to be opening gifts oh my gosh i sat through a baby shower once there was like 150 guests and there were like a million gifts. She was opening gifts for like three and a half hours. I'm not kidding. I think I'm a terrible person, but I snuck out. I'm like, bye, have fun, enjoy your gifts. I was like, I am not gonna sit here. And I left during the gift opening and at that point she had been opening gifts for like three and a half hours. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I'm so, I'm so bored, <laughs> I'm so freaking bored. So it's really just gonna be, I think, I just wanted it as an opportunity to just like see my family, you know, my extended family. And I don't want it to be all baby showery. It's just gonna be more of a hangout, eat, drink, things like that. So I guess that's why I'm not super stressed. I'm not doing any decorations. I don't, I think it's, I don't know. It's just gonna be at my mom's house and I don't really see the point in trying to make it all nice. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't like knock anyone who has like full blown decorated baby showers and goes all out with the decorations. Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a special day and um, some people like to go all out. So they have like nice pictures to look back on and they'll hire a photographer and stuff, but that's not, it's not gonna be my vibe. I think I'd rather go more all out for like one of Archie's birthday parties. And we really don't plan on having like an actual birthday party till he's like maybe four years old. Like obviously we'll celebrate with like immediate family, but in terms of having like an actual birthday party where we invite people and like decorate and do like a whole thing, I'd want him to just be like old enough to enjoy it and remember it and like for the first few years you know it'll just be like our immediate family or just us or something watch someone's gonna comment oh my god that kid's gonna need so much therapy because he didn't get a first and second and third birthday party get over yourself he's gonna be fine i also bought this outfit to wear to my baby shower and i look like a freaking potato <laughs> 
So I had to run out today and I went to a few stores to pick up some options, which I hope work. Cause I was like, I am not freaking wearing this. I'm not, I look ridiculous. And then I ended up buying a bunch of clothes that I can wear once I'm not pregnant anymore. And I was like, I want my body back. I just want to wear cute clothes again. I'm like wearing the same bottoms like every day where I cycle through the same two bottoms every day. I used to wear a lot of like big oversized shirts, but now like they're just looking, they're looking frumpalicious on me. <laughs> like I just not a vibe. Yeah, sure. Um, you guys go on an ad break. I'm gonna finish wiping this down. Vince is gonna take a call. So, be right back. My hair looks horrible. Oh my gosh, I need a haircut already. Everything is growing so freaking fast. Look, it's already touching my shoulders. Ugh. I was gonna get a haircut before I left. My hairstylist was like, you have to come see me right before you leave for your baby shower so your hair looks nice. But I'm like, do I wanna spend another $50 just to have like two inches trimmed off? No. Could I get a haircut for free by my mom and have it be a little bit crooked? Yes. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm just gonna have my mom trim it. The next, guys, we're getting bigger and bigger here. I'm like, ugh. So let's just do this, um, whatchama, whatchama call? This Rubro Sinctum Platinum. I, I think I'm gonna chop this leaf off, this one that's yellowing, because it's just gonna be one less um, leaf that Lauren has to ship, and it probably would be fully yellow by the time it arrives at its de destination anyway. So I'm gonna chop that off. Uh, here we go, untangling another moss plant. It's crazy how many plants um, Aaron still has growing in moss and they just grow so well. I mean, to be fair, I used to use moss as a growing medium too, like a long-term permanent growing medium, but I just, yeah. It stopped working for me after a while. Oh, that feels nice. I'm so happy she left all these sheaths on for me to peel. Sure, I got it. Uh, oh my god. Okay. Let's get you out of here. I think I'm gonna have to do some root trimming because there's a lot of really dry roots in here. There's so much algae on the outside. And yeah. She's needed help a long time ago, but the leaf has grown quite like a like a decent size, just on neglect. I'm impressed. I didn't even know um, Erin still had this plant in her in her house. I thought this one was purged a long time ago for some reason. I probably could actually keep this one in moss instead of putting it in soil, since it's already it already has moss roots. And I can just reuse some of this moss and it'll be lighter. But I want to see what this chonk looks like. I bet you it's huge. Look at how big this, oh, I don't know. Look how big this chonkaroni is. It's this big guy right here. Oof. We're going to need the shears. I'm honestly just peeling a lot of these roots off because they're just so dry and dead. They're just like snapping off. And a lot of these are likely, she probably has had this in the same vessel since she imported it. So these are probably import roots as well. As long as it has a little bit of a root system to sustain this one leaf, I would feel good about it. There's actually not a lot of good roots on it. Like all of these actually look like really dead. And I wanted to chop it, but now all of the roots are on the top or on the bottom. And I wanted to chop it at least 
Well, I guess I could chop it here. But that means I'm not gonna be able to sell it right away because this is not rooted enough for it to be sold. I guess I could just sell it like this and not chop it. Like I really don't need a cutting of this plant. I really don't. We'll just sell it like this. It's got these roots to sustain one leaf. It's really not bad. I'm so excited to eat going back home to California. Something I really like, something I want as soon, not as soon as I land, because I land at like midnight, but the next morning I told my sister, please bring me Phil's coffee, the mint mojito. Oh my gosh. Best coffee ever. It's Turkish coffee. And um, I am a simp for that drink. And then I want, um, there's, I don't know, I don't remember what the ramen place is called, but it's in Midtown. Is it in Midtown? It's by that Safeway, um, if you guys are from Sac. They have ramen with spinach noodles. It's gonna be torture though, because I can't have the egg, which freaking sucks. Sucks balls, but it's fine. And then I want Mexican food. I want carne asada fries. Oh my gosh. There's also an all-you-can-eat um, Korean barbecue place that we go to. I'm just excited to eat. I'm just, I'm excited for freaking Taco Bell and In-N-Out and I'm gonna, oh my gosh. I'm gonna come home like 20 pounds heavier and it is not gonna be baby weight. I think... I'll just pot it in this little cup. Whoever gets this is gonna be like, um, okay, can the chunk be any bigger? <laughs> and I think I'm gonna inoculate this one, get some roots going. I actually might hold on to this one until the next live sale, because there's another one next week, just to make sure that it doesn't tank and go downhill and like lose its leaf, because I don't want her to have to deal with a refund. I just wanted to get these plants out of the house before um, I leave for California. This one is potted. I'm not gonna wipe this leaf down because she looks clean already. And hopefully she is uh, gonna be okay with a lot less roots. But like this root system just like was not it anyway. Um, I am not sure about this last one you guys for a lot of reasons <laughs> i'm not for one i'm not sure i'm ready to let it go and two i'm not sure i have it in me to repot it right now but it's like i'm already here i've already gotten messy it's like should i just rip the band-aid off you know plus this was the big plant i was telling you guys about that i was gonna get rid of so that I can make space for that Gloriosum because it needs to go where this plant once was. Do you guys have any guesses what it might be? And it's nothing behind me, so. It was something that was living on the first floor. Any guesses, any guesses at all? Okay, I'm gonna make some space for the grand reveal. I need some coffee. And I wonder why Archie kicks me all day. If I show it on screen, that means I have to get rid of it. Can you even... Can you see part of it? <laughs> okay. Holy moly, I almost knocked this rubrosinctum over. See, now I don't want to get rid of it. Because look at her, she's so big now. But I have two of them and my other one is getting so big and this one is massive. Like, look how big these leaves are. They don't look that big on camera, but like, like they are, like they are big. The leaves are like really, really, hello. I don't know if you can see, no, I'm sticky. But the leaves have gotten really big. Like they're a good size. And there's just so many leaves. Oh my gosh, Lauren is gonna have a hernia if I walk into the shop like this. But I was thinking of not selling this in her live sale, but just selling it in the shop. 
and whoever's local can buy it and I'll post it on my stories so that maybe hopefully someone's interested but I just feel like you know like I need the space I need the space because it's just taking up so much room and I have two of them and I was thinking maybe I keep this one since I've had it the longest and it's bigger than my other one I mean I could technically put this in my bedroom but because we're gonna keep Archie in there for the first six months and like the drapes will probably be closed most of the time I'm like do I really want to put this in there because the petioles are going to get mega mega longer than like longer than they already are like these petioles are like a bajillion miles long but will I have regrets I, I love the billy so much some people don't understand it but I just have this I have this thing for the billy that I don't know I've been so proud of how this has been growing. I feel like I've babied it and nurtured it so much. And now I'm just gonna say goodbye. There's like a million leaves on this thing. I feel like I need to cut leaves off. What is that? Oh, it's EFN. F, okay, let's chop some leaves off so it's a little bit more manageable. So let's go to the oldest leaves. I'll just do it like this from the side. So this is an old leaf. Um, old. Some of these are really nice though. It's shiny. Okay, but now I'm gonna have like empty spots. I hate that it's it, like, she is not gonna enjoy this. The wingspan of this i might actually have to like ask her if it's even okay to bring this to the shop if not i can throw it up in our um in our like in the facebook group that i'm in and see if anybody wants to buy it from there so that lauren doesn't even have to deal with it but i think i'm gonna be re i think i'm gonna be repotting it into this okay i've committed to it i think i'm committing to letting it go and I am just going to reuse the same soil. So maybe, maybe let's go like this. So you can actually see what I'm doing. I've never done this before. I feel like the light temperature is so off. It's like so white compared to my grow lights behind it, but oh well. So this is what the root system looks like right now. Oh, you can't see anything. It's actually very, very thirsty because it's such a big plant, but it's really like life in no drainage. And so hopefully whoever adopts this um, also does no drainage because I think that's what she likes. like untangle it a whole bunch because I'm literally just plopping it into this new vessel but it's not as deep so I just have to get some of the depth off which is basically just the LECA. All right now I can turn back around. That was probably useless. I don't even know how much I'd sell this for. I feel like in my mind I want to put a high price tag. Not a high but like higher because it's a mature specimen. It actually has like it's not like facing downward like i feel like a lot of people struggle with the lighting with the billies and um like the leaves just end up facing down but i feel like i've managed like a pretty good growth pattern with this besides the fact it has such a wide wingspan but compared to some of the ones that i've been seeing that have like super long internodes um i feel like this is a really nice one but then I think that maybe I'm over inflating it in my brain because I love this one so much. You know what, I think I am just gonna post this in the group because I think Lauren might have, oh, there's a little growth point waking up. 
Don't Sherman, don't justify it in your head. Don't do it. Don't do it. I think I need like a support stake. Cause now it doesn't have that tall vessel to like lean on. Can you see? Why does it seem so dark, but so bright at the same time? Does someone enlighten me? Oh, this is not big enough. <laughs> I didn't realize how girthy this stem has gotten. It's big. Jeez Louise. Trust the process. Trust the process. It's gonna be mostly like. <laughs> um, here's what I need to do. You know what? If I get soil on here, so be it. Oh, here, 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 here. Oh, oh my, oh my. Okay, there we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. Everybody fall in line. All right. This is gonna be a painful goodbye. But yeah, like I was saying, I don't really know what my happy number is for this plant, but it's hard because it's like, you can't really, like with market prices, you can't like <laughs> be like, well, it's sentimental to me, so I'm gonna charge you this much. Yeah. But it has to be enough to justify my sadness when it's gone, that's for sure. I actually bought this one from Lauren back in 2020. This is that Billy that had that massive import leaf on it, remember? And it like survived for like four years. It wouldn't die. <laughs> it was indestructible. But I find that like billy leaves really don't die off very fast, which is why this thing has so many leaves on it. I need to push these roots down. I think that's good. I mean, it's not perfect. It's still leaning a little bit, but it seems well supported, at least enough to hold it upright. Don't fall as if it would actually listen to me. Okay. Here she is. I chopped off. How many leaves did I chop off? And she still is so freaking bushy. Yeah, she's a lot. Yeah, Lauren is not going to be happy if I show up at the shop with this. So I'm gonna throw her, throw her up on the Facebook group tonight instead. See what bites I get back. Now we just have to do these little Nectaris corns and then we'll be done. Okay, I am so sticky. I'm sticky, I'm sticky, that's what she said. Is that a, I don't know why that rings a bell. Is that like a, you know that game, Cards of, is it Cards of Humanity? Card, something Humanity? Cards of Humanity? Cards? Isn't that one of the questions? Why am I sticky? Did I just make that up? Oh my gosh, something smells that. I think it's actually that moss. It smells musty, real musty. Okay, I'm gonna lift my table up a little bit for this. Please don't clip my finger again. Oh, is that the highest? Giving you guys a better view of these corms. So I was gonna put gloves on, but I don't have very good handling when I have gloves on because I get itchy when I handle alocasia corms and I don't know why. This is just hydrogen peroxide. You don't have to do this, but I just want to soften the outside a little bit. This one is pretty good already. I have my little scraper here. So to me, this is like the ideal corm, like in terms of the size. The plumpness, it's got the little tail. So this is the, if you're not familiar with corms, the part with the tail is the bottom. And the part that has this little pointed top is the top. And um, it, this one doesn't have a lot of that like bark around it. 
You don't need this tail, but you can keep it if you want. Um, I usually shorten it a little bit so that it's not too long, but you can totally propagate a corn without it. And I just try and scrape some of this bark off, although this one is like just ready to be planted already. You don't wanna overly scrape it to the point where you damage it too much, just enough to make sure that the corn, like the fleshy tissue of the corn makes contact with your substrate because then you can get roots on it a lot faster. So that's all I'm gonna do for this one. I'm gonna just trim down this tail a little bit. Stick this back into hydrogen peroxide. Grab another one. This one has a lot more of that husk on it. You don't have to do this to propagate a corm. You can literally just shove the whole thing into your substrate, but I just find things go so much faster when you peel them. Just make sure to wash your hands if you um, find yourself getting itchy because yeah, whatever is like on here, it makes me so itchy after. I feel like I haven't like scraped a good chunk in a long time. Cause when I'm at the shop, I don't really take the time to like do stuff like that. Cause we're always doing things so quickly, like potting up props or doing website stuff. And most of my plants have already been scraped into oblivion, but I could do this all day long. Pudge is like creeping, let me show you. Was that a burp? Was that a burp? Oh my gosh, I'm already getting itchy. Okay, I gotta do this quickly. Fluval stratum is my substrate of choice in terms of corn propagation. Um, this one is mixed in with a little bit of gravel because I reused it from my fish tank. So don't add gravel just because I'm using gravel. I prefer to use it without gravel, but I also didn't want to waste fluval. Um, so I think I'm going to do the biggest corm on its own. And then I'm going to do the two smaller corms together, sell them together. I tend to do that if I have smaller corms. I'll um, pop multiple together and just sell them as like a pair. Just in case they like are weaker or whatever, I don't know. Bury it about that deep. I'm gonna just add a little bit more around it. You don't wanna bury it completely cause you want the growth to be able to come out of it but you can get roots along the entire surface area of the corm. You wanna bury it enough so that just like the tip is sticking out. That's what she said. Then I'm gonna wet it. That's also what she said. Okay, Sherms. Oh, my uterus. You don't want it drowning in water, but you do want a significant amount of moisture and humidity in here. And then I'm gonna just be taping another cup over it to enclose it completely. And I'll just keep it sealed the entire time. Um, you can air it out if you want, but I find that they do fine. If you're noticing some mold on the surface, you can spray some copper fungicide or some type of fungicide. Oh, sorry. Some type of fungicide over it and um, it should take care of it. Well, friends, that is the end of the road for us today. Um, I'm feeling okay about everyone I'm selling. The Billy is gonna be hard, a hard one to let go, but I know it's the right choice. Um, if I didn't have a backup of it, there is no chance in Hecaroni. She would even be on the chopping block, but 
my other one is well on its way to becoming this size so it just doesn't make sense to have two massive ones in this little apartment so um yeah that's gonna wrap it for me um if any of you guys end up buying any of these plants i hope they do well with you i hope you give them a lot more love than I've been able to give them. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Thank you for being here for another video. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.